Hello, DCT family. Hope you're doing great. Today, we are continuing the emulsion series, and we will start with an answer to the last question we had about emulsions, which was how to differentiate between the oil in water and the water in oil emulsions. When we put the two components of the emulsion, the oil and the water, with the secret ingredient, the emulsifying agent, what type of emulsion will be formed then? Will the droplets of the oil be dispersed within the aqueous phase forming the oil in water emulsion or will the reverse happen resulting in a water in oil emulsion? Well, this is mainly controlled by the stability of the droplets formed when the two components are mixed together. In our video on the emulsification theory, we did illustrate this and we mentioned that upon addition of the two phases, they acquire the spherical shape to reduce the surface tension or here the interfacial tension in order to reduce the energy of the system and eventually increase the stability of the system. Well, the phase whose droplets aggregate first will become the external phase or the continuous phase and the droplets of the other phase will be dispersed throughout the system forming the dispersed phase. In simpler words, if the water came together first, the resulting emulsion would have the oil droplets dispersed in water and an oil in water emulsion will be formed. And when the opposite is true, if things went the other way around, a water in oil emulsion will be formed. This is general, however, there are certain things that can help us determine whether the emulsion is an oil in water or a water in oil one when we look to the formulation. These are 1. It the volume of the internal phase and this is reflected by what is termed the critical value which is the volume occupied by the spherical droplets of the internal phase. For the oil and water emulsions the critical value is around 74% meaning if the internal phase or the oil occupies more than this 74% the emulsion will change to be a water and oil emulsion. And this is because at values greater than 74%, the probability of the coalescence of the oil droplets will increase, which leads to complete first separation at the end, and that will make the oil a continuous phase rather than a dispersed phase. For the water in oil emulsions, the critical value is about 40%. Meaning, if the water exceeds the 40% ratio, the likelihood of the emulsion converting into an oil and water emulsion will be high. Yet, why do you think the critical value of the oil and water emulsions is 74% while that of the water and oil ones is only 40%? I will hint at this in just a second. Okay, so the next thing thing to help us determine the type of an emulsion it is the properties of the emulsifying agent. This simply means that there are emulsifying agents which will help form an oil and water emulsions and there are others which will result in water and oil emulsions. And that depends on the composition of the emulsifying agent which either contains a higher hydrophobic portion or in other terms lipophilic which means fat or oil loving making them suitable to stabilize the water and oil emulsions or the vice versa emulsifying agents with a higher water loving or hydrophilic portion that will favor forming an oil and water emulsion. The contribution of the hydrophilic and the lipophilic groups in an emulsifying agent to its overall solubility pattern is termed hydrophile-lipophile balance or the HLB and this is a very common term that I think you will hear a lot when dealing with emulsifying agents, surfactants and related topics. But anyway, 
Now I will give you the hint to the question's answer. The oil and water emulsions are stabilized by emulsifying agents having a higher hydrophilic portion. Recall the shape of these emulsifying agents which we touched upon in our last video on emulsions and how they would look like in the emulsion. Compare that picture with the one of the emulsifying agents stabilizing the water and oil emulsions. Draw them both and you will get the answer right away. Check the correct answer in the comment section and let us know what did you think the answer is. Okay, so these are the two main things which can help you identify the type of the emulsion when you look into an emulsion formulation. The proportion of the phases with concentration on the critical value and the emulsifying agent used. However, if you have a ready-made emulsion and you would like to know its type, there are several tests which can help you with that. One is the electrical conductivity. It is known that water is a better electric conductor than the oil and thus the water in oil emulsions will conduct electrical currents unlike the water in oil ones. Two is the dilution with water. With the water being the external phase, adding water to the oil in water emulsions is an option but it's not with the water in oil ones. You can test this out by adding water to milk. Being oil in water emulsion, milk can accept more water into it, unlike margarine which is a water in oil emulsion. And the last test that can help you determine the type of the emulsion is the dye test. Here again, the concept is quite simple. The water-soluble dyes will color the oil in water emulsions and the lipid or the fat-soluble dyes will color the water in oil emulsions. With this, we come to an end to today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, stay fabulous wherever you are.